Hi, I'm Mr. Nice. Happy Halloween! Have you ever heard of a weird fungus called Ophiocordyceps unilateralis? Maybe you're more familiar with just cordyceps or the zombie ant fungus. It affects an ant's behavioral patterns, leading it to certain death and rupturing a fruiting body from its head before that. It's definitely one of the creepier organisms on planet Earth, but what if there was something more creepy on a different planet? The planet we've been exploring in most of my videos is called Origin. There's nothing like cordyceps there, but what about some other speculative planet? On a warm planet called Pamela that I named when I was 8, there are strange fungal bodies with the mind of a person. We've never been on that planet or seen these creatures, but we've heard of them from a group of people known as Crazimals who've come from there. It's a long story. Anyway, a different story about these fungal bodies starts 50 million years ago. In a low-light fungal forest that stretched for kilometers, snail-like animals called Biscosium lived their whole lives on comparatively huge calcium-covered mushroom trees. They ate from the fruiting bodies that hung from branches and drank the dew that stuck to them. Unfortunately, those fruiting bodies were sometimes covered with spores that came from a different fungus. After being eaten, the spores stick somewhere in the Biscosia's digestive system and begin to grow. They make their way up into the brain, making themselves very obvious in the eyes. The sick Biscosia is compelled to make its way to the tip of a branch in an attempt to relieve the cold sensation in its face. The warmth of the lava seems to feel good enough that it will spend the rest of its life there, forgetting to eat. Its eyes glow in bright colors and is most likely eaten by a squirrel-like animal before it dies of starvation. By this time, the fungus has grown a fruiting body. This fruiting body releases spores that spread around on its own tree, but also down below. And when eaten by a larger animal, it is allowed to spread even farther. Not only is this fruiting body colorful, but it's also thought to have smelled deliciously like fresh fruit. Once it was eaten by an animal, it continued to another part of its life cycle. The fungus passes through other organisms quite easily, and falls to the earth mixed with relatively nutritious gunk. The ground floor of this segment of the planet is completely entrenched in a fungal matrix called mycelium. Every 10,000 meters or so, there is a mass of this fungus called the heart. This 10 meter tall mass is considered to have been horribly toxic, and it was the only life in its area for at least 100 meters. Even the air around it was heavy with spores, and impossible to survive in. It's not very well known why these masses existed, or what they did. However, its descendants are still alive today. They're known as the Flayed Lord's Hive. Today's Biscogium are not much like their ancestors, but maybe you can see the resemblance. They are very heavily built, with a body plan somewhere between reptiles and amphibians. Of course, their most obvious features are their long beak and the giant shell of calcium carbonate. They're thought to have powers like some sort of dragon, and the raw magic found in their shells and stomachs is extremely valuable. Their description certainly fits a dragon like on Origin. And yeah, if you're not familiar with my videos, I like to stick magic in places where it doesn't belong. Sorry, I hope it doesn't bother you too much. These thousand kilogram beasts eat the shells of dead trees and gain the calcium inside. However, those in a certain area will likely eat something unwanted. The spores from the FLH fungus are one of the few organisms that can survive in the digestive system of a Biscosia, and not only do they survive, but they thrive. They're built to absorb the mana every time a Viscosia uses magic, and this helps the fungus to grow stronger. As time progresses, the fungus eventually makes its way up into the brain. The Viscosia quickly dies, but the fungus will keep its body working for months. Instead of keeping to their normal giant snail routine of keeping to themselves while eating and sleeping, they join together with other infected Biscosia and make their way into the darkest depths of Pamela. God, this would be so much cooler if the planet had a different name. Anyway, pretend this is super dramatic. In an area where no light reaches the ground, a giant lies still. A great beast who knows no time, who knows no warmth. The Crazimals call it the Flayed Lord, and they have many depictions of it. During a horrible famine, the Flayed Lord was said to have come from the dark and fed every Crazimal an incredible meal made from the Lord's own flesh. To this day, it's customary to eat a meal of mushrooms on a certain day of every year. Here's a common depiction of this Flayed Lord. The Flayed Lord is depicted with the colors of their bloom and stripes like scars from losing its skin. 
the huge beast could be the largest sapient being if it truly exists. Apart from its huge central body, it's likely that the Flayed Lord is more than just this angelic form. A network of mycelium spans across all the dark patches in Pamela, which is more than 10 million square kilometers, or more than a quarter of the surface area of the planet. And hey, what happened to those Biscogia? Although the infected Biscogia look creepy, they are less dangerous than a healthy Biscogia. To be fair, they're no longer even Biscogia, as they're just a FLH fungus controlling the huge dragon's body. For the few months that this situation is ongoing, they do things that are difficult to explain, such as play or standing for long periods of time with another and making noises at each other. It's hypothesized that these organisms are sapient, but there's just not enough research being done on them to know for sure. Charismal society is apparently more concerned with philosophy and arts than studying our world. Anyway, after about six months, the Biscogium fully decay and are reabsorbed into the mycelium. Before that, these eerily peaceful organisms spend most of their time foraging for carrion and other kinds of decaying life. They don't eat it themselves, but store in their stomachs which have been repurposed as food storage bags and regurgitate it to their leader. These mounds of flesh-like fungus are known as the heart. There's more than a million of them spread relatively evenly across the planet. They pulse eerily in the dim lighting. A thick air of spores surrounds them, but infected animals don't seem to mind. They bring food to the heart until they've decayed to the point of no longer being able to move. This food goes to the mycelium and likely finds its way to the flayed lord himself. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed these extra spec evil videos for October. It was a lot more work than I thought it'd be, but it was super fun. If I do it again, I'll either be more prepared or I'll do it in the winter or summer when I don't have school. Anyway, if you enjoy these and want more, please consider subscribing. My next big evil video will be about supersized seaweed sea serpents. I hope to see you there, and happy Halloween!